Mount Hope Cemetery in Rochester, New York. This is the mausoleum of William Stuber, who made great contributions to traditional photography. William was born in 1864. His father was one of the first photographers in Kentucky. And William inherited the business, and he went on to become a nationally recognized uh, portrait photographer. But at that time, photographers couldn't just go out and buy film in a store. They had to make their own light-sensitive materials. And William was dedicated to improving the quality of the materials he used. He heard about a scientist in Switzerland, Dr. Hugo Henry Smith, who was an expert at making uh, film emulsions, and he apprenticed with him for six months. George Eastman heard about Stuber and invited him to interview for a job with the new company, Kodak, which had been incorporated only six years earlier. Stuber was so confident about receiving a job offer that he brought his whole family to Rochester on that interview trip. Eastman hired him in 1894 to be in charge of photographic emulsion making. Now, what exactly is a photography, photographic emulsion? It is tiny crystals of the light-sensitive material, silver halide, suspended in gelatin, rather like pieces of fruit in a jello salad. This is coated in a thin layer on a transparent support. Emulsions at that time were very hard to make reproducibly. They varied wildly from batch to batch. Gelatin for, used for photography was made from cow bones, and evidently there were some impurities that affected the final product. In particular, the film speed was all over the place. Film speed measures how sensitive the emulsion is to light. Stuber was having a difficult time in his laboratory. Batch after batch of emulsion was no good. One day he went out to dinner and returned to his laboratory to do more work. Frustrated by his failures, he urinated into a batch of emulsion. The next day he decided to test that batch anyway, and to his surprise, it was an excellent batch, very sensitive to light. Something in his urine had made a difference. He set to work to figure out what had happened. It turned out that his dinner was responsible. He had eaten corned beef and cabbage. Cabbage has sulfur compounds in it, and the sulfur had reacted with the silver halide to make it more sensitive to light. Now, depending on what the cows had eaten, there were differing amounts of sulfur in their bones and differing amounts in the gelatin. The little yellow flowers often seen blooming in pastures are mustard plants, which contain sulfur compounds. If cows eat a lot of this type of plant, sulfur gets incorporated into their bones. They discovered that small amounts of sulfur compounds could be added to the emulsion to improve film speed. If Stuber had eaten potatoes instead of cabbage, it would have taken much longer to make this discovery. Stuber later became vice president of Kodak in charge of photographic quality. In 1925, when George Eastman retired as president of Kodak, he chose Stuber to be his successor. Stuber was president from 1925 to 1934 and then chairman of the board until 1941. He died in Rochester at 1959 at age 95.